Dustin with TechMD. Today we're going to be fixing an older phone. We're going to be fixing front screen, uh, battery, and also we're going to do back glass repair with the new technique that um, is from the 20, 2021, but 2022 officially. Um, this is uh, a technique that a lot of people don't use currently, but it is definitely a different way. If you're looking to get back glass repair, um, all these parts are going to be linked in the description and you can ask for the TechMD bundle from uh, Injure Gadgets if you're interested. So the first step is we're going to go ahead and just put on the heater. I just put it at 200 degrees. Uh, it's running a little hotter than normal for whatever reason. Yeah, so 200 degrees just for a couple minutes and wait for it to warm up. So now that it's nice and warm, you're going to use some gloves to not burn yourself and remove the two bottom screws, which I've already done with the Pentalope driver. Take a eye assessment tool here and we just open it up. You can easily twist that up with, if it's heated up. Now with the backlash, if you're gonna just do the backlash repair only, you don't even need to open up the phone whatsoever. Not required. I'm just gonna remove these tri-wing screws right from the center. Separate that and use a plastic tool to disconnect your battery connector. And this sensor right here, this controls your ear speaker. Carefully unplug that, it is glued, but if it's warm enough, that'll come loose. And then just disconnect the cable underneath here and just under there as well. That'll come nice and loose real fast. Next step is I like to um, use heat to remove the battery. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, put on maximum heat, which, for this one, it is like around the 240 degrees Fahrenheit. All these tools and parts are going to be linked in the description. It'll definitely help support our channel if you guys are looking for tools. Customer uh, didn't care about using an aftermarket uh, screen or battery, so we're going to do that. I only have the Apple logo uh, backs though, but you can get um, the backs from Injured Gadgets if you want. Uh, they just don't have the Apple logos. Okay, separate that and move that away. If this is still good, you can actually salvage it and send it back to like injured gadgets and they'll give you some money for it, but it's no good. So that just goes straight in the garbage can. Now that comes off, um, this piece here comes off really easily if you use heat. If you don't use heat, well, it's not going to come off as easy. I'm not being very descriptive with this kind of repair as I normally am just because I've done it so many times. But basically, this piece here, get my tool underneath that and pull it out. Pretty straightforward, but some people need help. So I don't know if you viewed that, but I'm just digging right under here and pulling it out. You can use tweezers also to help you get that out as well. So bringing the tri-point screwdriver, and I'm using grip tools, I will absolutely love these tools to screw these in. Now this little piece here, oh, doesn't have one. Oh, there it is, yeah. This little piece here is not exactly required. I'm not exactly sure what it does. This little gold contact thing. Maybe some kind of ground. I've seen phones not have them and operate just fine.
If the screwdriver's not magnetized enough, just get, you know, grab your magnetizer. Hopefully that'll be enough to get that both connected there. Split it through the hole initially, pull up. And I hold the, the top side of that, that way it stays in position. And then it's just facing this direction, up and over like that, right there. Now we're just gonna set our screen aside because we're not gonna be doing anything with our screen anymore for a while. And our back should be nice and toasty. It is. We're gonna take our eye plastic tool. Um, it's a very thin piece of metal or plastic, so it it's very hard to puncture or break cables. But obviously you wanna be above these Face ID cables, or you're gonna damage face ID permanently. And just lift up once you get some of the glue loosened. Take this and twist. Okay. Now, since we are messing with the front, I don't want these front cameras roomed. Um, since I'm not going to close it up yet. So I'm just going to move these out of the way. But you don't have to. Uh, if you don't have to open the phone whatsoever. This is if you're doing a screen and battery repair and, and back glass and using the new technique. So I'm just removing the adhesive Why the back is nice and toasty. Okay. Now if your frame is bent, too heavily or it's broken here, you'll need to replace the frame. And you can get those um, from injured gadgets as well. But unfortunately, you have to tear everything apart and put all of it in. It's just kind of a pain. So just get some packing tape. And the whole point of this procedure is so that way the um, this oh, brain work. Um, wireless cooler co coil doesn't fall through. If there's a battery sitting there, it won't. Uh, perks about opening your phone and removing the battery is you can go much faster with the heat, especially right here, but you don't want to do too, uh, too long either way. You don't have to worry about the middle as much uh, when puncturing, uh, when doing this. Okay, so the next uh, spot is we're going to move areas and move over there. I'm just gonna put it on the back heater, uh, warm it up anyways, and then we're gonna get to work. Okay, so I recommend some kind of uh, eyewear because glass does fly. This is our fume extractor. And it sucks up the fumes from the chemicals that we're gonna use. If you don't know what kind of tools I'm using, I'd highly recommend watching our sponsored video um, explaining all the tools in here or you just request the Tech and B bundle. This is our glue remover. It's a solvent that you use. I'm gonna tighten this, but not too tight, guys. We're gonna have a really bad time. Because what happens is it bows it up. This is a little harder to puncture. I should have done this beforehand with um, the back glass or the front not being on, as I remember. We're going to use our, it's like IROC or something like that. Just basically, it's a glass breaker. You definitely want to get it around this camera as much as possible. When I watch that center, see, I, I punctured the, the Wi-Fi antenna a little bit. I don't want to do that too much. Or not Wi-Fi antenna, but oh, my brain doesn't want to work today. Uh, wireless coil. So I'm going to use my heat gun as described 
in my first tutorial and sponsored video. And I'm going to use some of my liquid remover here. I usually turn on the fumigator to 80, but it's too noisy for the camera, so we're not going to do that. Turn on 425 degrees Celsius at 50 degrees, or 50% um, airflow. You know what? Since I don't have a great spot, but this is a nice hole. Well, try to make a hole somewhere, but preferably not in the middle. That way you can enter in a little bit easier. And so for heat wise, you don't want to leave the heat on for more than two to three seconds in one area. So you want to move it out of the way, rotate it, whatever. Um, and you want to watch out for these edges as well because you don't want to melt the corners and you don't want to damage any components on the inside either. Too much heat will cause problems. So I like to just kind of move around the phone and, uh, and change different spots. If you're having a rough time with some areas, then just use more glue remover. Just remember to be careful with these sides. You definitely don't want a carpet underneath you while you're doing this. <laughs> it gets pretty messy. Let's go ahead and rotate this. I didn't even double check to make sure the camera was in view. Oops, I think it was. Try to avoid the middle either way because it's the most trickiest to work with and you don't want a lot of heat on the battery. So I just avoid it and if long pieces go here, I either break them or I move around them until it's the last thing to do. Because that's the least amount of heat you want to apply, especially if the phone's closed up because of the battery. So I'm, I'm getting some serious resistance here. So I just apply a little bit of adhesive remover. I 
Okay, so I feel like this area is getting a little too hot now, so we're gonna move over here. Give that area a little bit of a cool down. Definitely some resistance. Leave that side of the phone alone for a little bit. Work on some other sides. Again, get some resistance. Camera lens, uh, the glue is the glass is tucked underneath the camera lens, so don't expect that to pop up with the other pieces. It actually has to be pulled out with this little piece. You have to get a good spot to do it, which I got one. Careful of the camera. There's a big old giant plastic flash in the middle and then too much heat can warp the camera. And so it's really sizzling hot there. So let's go ahead and work on another area. Go ahead and just take off the back here because it's irritatingly long. That's how I do it though, is I just pull up on the big giant piece. Until it gets too bent, you can try to bend it back the best you can, but at one point you just have to replace it. Uh, they're like 10 for 10, so a dollar each. 
I just say expect it to happen. Broken tip. All right, got my new blade. Hopefully, I don't break it. Well, the iPhone X, they sure put some really thick adhesive here. Using the other side of the blade that I have, it's really nice. Helps remove glue. Try another little trick since I really don't want to ruin the cameras and this one's being extra difficult. Just a layer of captain's tape to try to protect that camera as much as possible. I possibly could just put it on right at the beginning, but I didn't. I don't know, just trying different techniques because this is all new to me as well, guys. Someone taught me the technique and they're like, you know, how about it kind of thing. You probably shouldn't do that with, <laughs> you should use a rag, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Try to tack the side again here. I'm just showing you my tip I use, it's not too thick. My goal is still not to do more than three seconds, but I have a habit of making it longer. I'm trying to get out of that habit. Just want a little burst of heat. Nice. Leave that side. We're just gonna leave it alone for it to pull down and we're gonna start trying to remove some of the glue here. Any leftover glue or glass we wanna get rid of. There's a layer on the frame that you wanna get rid of too.
So just be careful around the battery area, obviously. And mine's gonna sink in a little bit because it's not fully taped apparently. I'm just removing the old adhesive. Nothing more, nothing less. Looking for that clear glue that's still stuck on your white frame here. Kind of hard to find sometimes. But it's there. Just want to be really careful around the open holes to inside the phone. Don't be blowing too much hot air in there. I'm going to be much more cautious around the open holes. So I'm just going to dig up the glue here. Careful around the frame. And dig up any leftover glass. Yeah, he's there. Once it's setting flush, you want to be pretty OCD about it, guys. Just extra, extra. Everything is nice and clean and looking really good. Because it does matter. It won't sit flush if you don't have it sitting correctly or everything cleaned off correctly. Let's go ahead and remove Capton's tape. Clean up any excessive glue or glass. Okay, once you're satisfied, turn off your heater. Take some alcohol on a microfiber rag or really thin white ones. You can get, you'll get it in the pack. I like the blue ones, yellow ones from Costco. Really clean it, guys. Make sure there's no bumps or anything excess. Okay, next step will be cold press glue. But if you're just doing the screen repair and battery, you need to put that in first. Because I don't clamp it down, I use tape to clamp it down. Huge difference, okay? Okay. 
We could probably just do it all right here. I don't need to move anything. I'm, I'm square enough to do it right here, I think. <laughs> If this foam is water resistant as possible, you need to replace your seal here. All right, next part, go ahead and clean the frame. It has a nice sticky surface to stick on. Let's go ahead and remove your tape, maybe. Really stuck in there. Looks just fine. Just got a little bit torn there. Grab your iPhone. Battery, I use the 117% health one. A little bit better than original. To be honest, most of the original ones you find out there are already fake. Get this ready to stick in, but do the front camera first. All right, let's get our adhesive on there. Once you get the adhesive on there, go ahead and pull the tab and hopefully it's sitting down enough. On the frame to come up. Not always that easy though.
now. And you? Okay, uh, we got that adhesive put on there. We need to put the screen on. We go ahead and put this on here. I want to make sure you guys are able to see this. We're going to just use my little favorite screen holder tool. Pretty awesome. It's called the Eye Hold. Just hold your screen, especially if you're one-handed, that would be super helpful. Oh, I forgot to disconnect the battery. Make sure you disconnect the battery. Uh, I just plug it in just to make sure it, it's sitting in the correct position before taping it down. Okay. I hold this. Nice to use, obviously, while I'm filming too here because I'm my screws are over in this direction. And I don't want to move the camera over again. And since you're doing front and back, and you have to press this down, the packing tape is going to have that clamping pressure, the clamping pressure that you need to do this with. iPhone X front back camera or um, and battery. So a lot of work. Lots and lots of work. All right, now that we got that, take that out of there. Get out of the clamp. And go ahead and make sure these things are not too bent. You might have to bend them inward a little bit. Check your, your sides, make sure they're not bent. I recommend soft OLED or better quality. Unless you're just trying to get the cheapest stuff, then go for the LCD. But if you do, make sure you buy it from like a Andrew Gadgets or something. Or Mobile Centrix or uh, Andrew Gadgets link is in the description um, for these LCDs. Okay, now that the screen's on, we want to put the panel open. Okay, and then you test the screen, make sure it's all functioning before you tape it all down. Obviously the battery as well. Um, next part is you're gonna need the cold press glue. I like to use um, disposable removable tips, all part of, well, that's not part of the pack, but you can buy them. Um, that glass you can buy from Andrew Gadgets, it just won't have the logo. But they're just as strong as original, it's just no logo. And cold press is ready to go. Just double check our phone, make sure it's working. And then I know they didn't have service in here quite yet. So that should be working too. Or not working. All right, so let's go ahead and start pressing for the glue to come out. Get around the camera. You know what, you're supposed to rotate your clamp. When you're almost finished with the glue, just make sure you're not pressing on it. Just let it organically come out. This is exactly why you need a nice thin coat 
or this is why you need to clean off the old glue very well because this can only be so thin. And it just come squeezing out the side if you didn't have it thick enough. Obviously it's gonna still come out squeezing out the side a little bit, but not too much. And make sure you completely coat it where you, those lines are basically the original lines were around that area. Now I add my little own twist to this. By the way, if this is under pressure, this is gonna just push right out. So just put on something you don't care about just in case the glue leaks out. Get our T7000 and put it around the wireless charger here. Other areas where it's black. Take our back glass. Now, if everything's cleaned off and removed, when you set it down, it's not gonna crack. <laughs> so, hopefully you did that right. Line it up. Press down. After you're done, done pressing down, you got the alignment to exactly where you want. This spot, I noticed that popped up a little bit. It happens with heat, so you just gotta be careful. Um, we got cleaned up. We're gonna clean up the excess glues on the side here. You don't want a bunch of cold press glue hanging around. I would say put your tempered glass on before you um, put the tape down and probably even before you put the cold press glue on, just in case you take a while to do it. I use grip, which is very similar to Zag. They're extremely strong. Next is our packing tape and then we're done. I usually use a gun like this because it makes life much easier. Try not to cover the ear speakers or the power button. Press down hard and put the tape down. Same with the other side now. It's best to do it from this side. More clamping pressure up the back side is more important. For the bottom, you will cover the charge port up a little bit, but they should be able to still use it. But I, I move it over a little bit over here. So the way the microphone still works, the speakers, you can still hear something. But the microphone is so they can just talk on the phone at least. All right. And then a little bit of tape here. Final spot. That's here. If you don't cover the ear speaker, you'll still be able to talk on the phone and then leave it on for 24 hours. If you don't leave it on for 24 hours, well, let's just say the glass can come up, but at least two hours minimum, guys. So that's it. Pretty straightforward. If you notice it popping up, your frame's either a bent, you did too much clamping pressure, and it popped it up, 
I just highly recommend you watching this very clearly and maybe having some example screens sitting around to play with. Like this. Just already ready to test and play with. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and share and uh, more detailed videos of back glass repair and other uh, foam repairs coming in the future. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Thank you.